Did you know about the 5'9", 150 pound cult hero who was the first Asian American to play for the Yukon Huskies back in the early 2000s? We had a chance to speak with Thai and Taiwanese American Ace Watana Suparp, a point guard who defied every expectation. You know, there were fans that were like, you know, literally like in paint just having Ace, you know, it was like almost like the Rudy of, of basketball back then. Ace, here we go! Making his here we go. first appearance. He told us that the Yukon Fieldhouse manager tricked him into going to the wrong gym for his freshman year trials because he didn't think that someone like Ace could actually stand a chance. Since then, I put you know heart over talent, and every single day I would look, I would look at that um, going to sleep, and then I went to the gym every single day because nobody's gonna believe in you unless you believe in yourself. He's lived by that message, and since has become a founder, a president, and now is even starting his own bank. Like make your own path. Us as Asian Americans, we tend to just follow this like sort of like directional path and I feel like we just gotta break out of that mold. You know, we gotta do things different. Ace is a trailblazer story the community needs to know about. I'm here with Ace Watana Supark. Um, you know, former Yukon, Yukon Husky back in the 2000s, especially when there was almost no Asian American representation in, in Division One basketball. Talk to me about what that was like, you know, playing back then, kind of, you know, what the response was like from the community, some of the obstacles you had to overcome, things like that. Oh, wow, it was uh, so surreal. Uh, it was one of, one of those things where you experience once in a lifetime, right? But I had no idea the impact that it was going to be, um, not only on my life, but as a community. Uh, you know, I, I think while I was on the team, I didn't realize the, uh, the magnitude of what was happening at the time, but looking back at it, you know, there were fans that were like, you know, literally like in paint just having Ace, you know, it was like almost like the Rudy of, of basketball back then. And uh, it was amazing, you know, just being the first Asian American to walk on to UConn uh, was already uh, such an impactful statement. But for me, it was more about just having representation, right? And I think it's uh, it's done wonders in terms of, you know, now we look at Jeremy Lin and he's broken so many stereotypes and barriers. But back then, uh, even before Jeremy Lin's time, it was one of those things where, you know, you never see a 5'9 yeah. uh, Asian uh, walk on to like a uh, top collegiate uh, D1 school, right? So it was, it was amazing to see the whole school come together, fan mail. I, I received thousands and thousands of fan mail, you know, just families, um, you know, writing me uh, fan emails about how inspirational I am to their kids and things of that nature. So that, that was impactful for me. Uh, now looking at this charity game, basketball game, it's it, it's like it's like a dream come true, right? Uh, growing up, I wish I had that platform. Um, I didn't, and I think this just gives our youth such a such a great opportunity to really go out there, uh, hone in on the skill set, but just know that, you know, there's, I, I guess, trailblazers that kind of paved the way. And I, I couldn't be more proud uh, with Simu, Clement, Jeremy, just really giving back to the community, right? This is what it's all about. I'm glad to be here, and uh, it's been amazing. It's yeah. been an amazing ride. And one thing, one thing that's, like, you know, obviously unfortunate is that, you know, for a lot of these trailblazers that came, like, before, like, the time of, like, you know, mass media type thing, yeah. You know, we never hear their stories, right? Never. Like, for me, my biggest inspiration was this guy named Ruin Rom. Walk on at Maryland, became a scholarship player, yeah, then a March yeah. Madness hero. No one really ever, even though he's well after you, still no one really knows his story yeah. to this day. Um, so, like, you know, things like what you're doing with your documentary and, you know, the ability that, you know, this next generation has to tell these stories of our trailblazers. What do you think, like, kind of the importance of that is and how that can, you know, hopefully, you know, set a precedent going forward? Oh, it's, it's so important, right? I think uh, at first when I was talking about doing the documentary with John and Shane, I was a little hesitant too, right? Yeah. Because, you know, like us as Asian Americans, we're not as outgoing. And sometimes we, we're more like to ourselves and we don't really want to share our story. But after going through the process with these guys, um, I realized how impactful and important it is to share your stories. To your point, there's been so many trailblazer stories that nobody has ever heard of, right? So doing this documentary has been uh, number one interesting and number two, it's uh, brought a lot of meaning um, to, to what the experiences were and what our younger generation can kind of look forward to, right? Because, you know, for us, it's, it's all about if they watch the documentary and they're like, you know what? If someone like Ace could do it, you know, just a regular guy from Queens, New York, uh, you know, it, it gives them inspiration and hopefully positivity that they can do it too. So it's all about giving back to the youth. And I think it's important for us to share our stories um, in, in such a way where people can actually hear, you know, follow and hopefully use as 
as something to to sort of um, inspire to become, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So, and you know, for you, you like played during a time where it wasn't really acceptable to, or like, it wasn't really commonplace for you know you to open up about like some of the obstacles you might have overcome, maybe some of the racism you you yeah. had to deal with. Would you? I would love to hear like, is there any like? What are, what are some of like the cases that you had to go through kind yeah, of like throughout I mean, your journey? I mean, we talk about it in the film. Yeah. So when I first tried out my, my freshman year, I was at the field house and uh, Nigel, who was the sort of like field house manager, you know, folks were um, telling, hey Ace, you know, you have you, you have some game, you know, maybe you should try out for, for uh, UConn's walk-on uh, tryouts. And Nigel actually, when I asked him where it was, he actually told me that it was at another gym because he didn't really think that I was serious. So that was my first experience, not not towards um, racism, but just because I didn't fit the stereotype. I actually missed the freshman year tryouts because I was actually at another gym. Because he told me that, you know, and, and I confronted him afterwards, and he was just like, Ace, you know, I never thought that you were serious about trying out, right? So that really was the uh, sort of, um, I, I would say that the, uh, I, I would say that actually changed the um, sort of direction in terms of what I wanted to do, right? So since then I put, you know, heart over talent and every single day I would look, I would look at that um, going to sleep and then I went to the gym every single day because nobody's going to believe in you unless you believe in yourself, right? And, and that was one of the things that I experienced, which is not a lot of people will, will look at me and say, okay, this kid's going to walk on to UConn, right? So it was just one of those things where you got to really believe in, in, in what you're trying to do. And uh, yeah, I experienced so much racism. Not, not racism, but just stereotypes that I just didn't fit the mold. So a lot of people didn't believe in me, right? And it's just one of those things where if you have a strong support system, you know, you can overcome a lot of those things. So, so I think, look, I, I think racism and stereotyping is, is exists all over the world. It's really how you channel that to make it more of a positive type of um, situation than negative, right? So. Right. And, you know, for you, like, you know, in the aftermath of your playing career, you know, you got to see, you know, what Jeremy Lin did yeah. with, with his, like, legendary run. What was Amazing. that, what was that like? And obviously, you know, from what I've noticed in these past few years, we're kind of, we're about to see that kind of wave of talent coming into the league. You know, we're seeing it with cases like, you know, Jordan Clarkson, you know, Jalen Green. Definitely. You know, this year we got, you know, Jalen Williams. Yeah, we yeah. got we got a ton of people. We got, you know, like, we got a lot of Kai Sato in the works, you know, coming yep, from the yep. Philippines. There's, there's a ton of talent yeah. on the way in, in ways that we've never seen before. Sure. So what does that mean to you, you know, you know, like that, you know, you're doing, the, you did this, you know, 20 years ago and now, you know, kind of all of that is coming to fruition for the for the community now. Oh, it's 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 unbelievable, right? Uh, just looking at all these players now um, have this opportunity, and like you said, back then there was not a lot of opportunity. And I think looking at what Jeremy Lin did is he took he he took his his moment to shine, and he went for it, right? Literally within six games, he proved that he could play, right? And that that's what life is all about. It's about all these opportunities, and I hope the younger generation, all these kids that are now having a bigger platform that they take full advantage of it because I think sometimes you're a part of a system and you try to just be within that system and I think watching Jerry Millen's story was like look you know there, they, they, there had to be so many different things happening for him to have an opportunity to even go on the court but if he just went on the court and just passed the ball around nothing would have happened right this guy went in and he's like you know what I'm gonna show the world what Linsanity is all, all about right and I just want the younger generation to see that when they have an opportunity, go for it, and don't don't follow the norm. That's my biggest advice to our younger generation, right? Like, like make your own path, right? You have an opportunity, go out there and give it 100, right? Don't, because because us as Asian Americans, we tend to just follow this like sort of like directional path, and I feel like we just gotta break out of that mold. You know, we gotta do things different. So, and Jeremy Lin was such such a huge ins inspiration and story for that. Awesome. And lastly, I'd love to give you one of these shirts. Like, oh, it kind of like, this is like kind of like one of my favorite things I've done. It's kind of like, you know, I'm sure like as an athlete, you, you were, you were, these, the, the things that are, that are crossed off. Oh, yeah. This is kind of like what you were defined by. Sure. But what we're trying to do here is we're kind of like, you know, trying to like redefine like what it means to be an Asian American athlete. We want to like create that narrative for ourselves, right? We don't want our society to create that narrative. So it's like obviously these are not things that like normal like random people in society when they hear, hear the term Asian American athlete, they won't think of them as 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 as, as these positive connotations, right? But that's our it's our responsibility to kind of you know change that narrative so we can 
we can see, change how we're seen in, in the community. So I love to, I love to offer you. Oh man, thank you so much. You know <laughs> what? I wear right now. Shoot. Awesome. So this, so everyone can see. You know. <laughs> Appreciate that, man. Of course. <laughs> Hopefully the sizing is good everything. Let's go. <laughs> See this? What does it say, John? What does it say, John? Oh, man. Thank you so much. Of course, brother. Of course.